in this video, uh, we're going to prove uh, the important theorem uh, in this section. But let me first review some uh, terminologies. So suppose the, we have a directed graph G whose vertex set is the set of integers from uh, 1 to M. And we have a, some weight, edge weight and the adjacency matrix is given by this. And we define the cycle and we said the path is self-avoiding if we don't have self-intersections like that. And we, we have a collection of paths uh, called disjoint if all the paths themselves are self-avoiding and then we don't have any intersections among them. And we introduced this notation gamma. Capital gamma is the generating function for all disjoint collection of uh, disjoint collections of disjoint cycles in uh, in the graph and then we multi we add this weight so minus one for every cycle and the weight of the cycle which is the product of the weight of the edges there and then we also defined uh, gamma r comma j which is the generating function for all pairs of a path and disjoint cycles uh, are cycles such that including p uh, they are disjoint and p is a path from uh, i to uh, i to j that was the definition and the weight here is that p has weight p with no without sign but for all the cycles they have minus sign and uh, the weight like that and our uh, theorem that we want to prove today is this proposition so generating function for all path here they they may be uh, self self intersecting is okay but this can be written as a ratio of these two quantities gamma ij over gamma so this is generating function that looks like a path from i to j and a bunch of disjoint cycles including the path disjoint and this part this looks like uh, disjoint cycles like that and then we use this to prove this theorem and by the way in the previous lecture I uh, missed this um, factor so we need this extra factor and then with this factor everything uh, works out in the previous uh, lecture okay all right so today we're gonna prove uh, this and in fact I'm gonna give two proofs of this first combinatorial and the other um, using determinants right so let's see let me state the theorem or proposition proposition uh, P for all path from say R to S R as a policies the weight is equal to uh, gamma RS over gamma okay so proof to prove this we will uh, prove this equivalent statement so I'm gonna move P uh, sorry gamma the other side like this so we can prove instead uh, this identity now, um, what is the left-hand side here? So this is the generating function for disjoint cycles like this, and this is just a all kind of path from R, 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 R to S. We may have intersections. So, so left-hand side can be written in this way: generating function for all pairs p comma c one dot 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 c t which I write as uh, just a set x, w of p times minus 1 to t, wc1 dot 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 wct. Here, x is the set of all, all of tuples like this, where um, p is any path from R to S could be self intersecting and uh, the C1 
one dot 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 C T. This is must be disjoint. Disjoint cycles. But they may in have intersections with P. That's the So we want to show that this is equal to this, but we know that this is a generating function similar like this, but uh, including p, they must be all the, uh, disjoint. Okay, so we want our goal is to find sign reversing involution. Uh, find let's say a uh, find the sign reversing involution. Say v from x to itself with a uh, fixed point set being uh, let's see this c r comma s where c r s is the uh, yeah yeah this this set so script c let's write it that way. Okay, so to find such a thing, let this is the goal. So let us consider one pair in this set. We have two cases, or yeah, there's a. Let's just say, if this is already in the disjoint set, if this is already a C R S, that means including p inside, they are all disjoint, then just define it to be a fixed point. Uh, let me write it for simplicity. Ct. We just define it to be a, a fixed point. All right. So suppose now that this is not a, a disjoint. So in other words, uh, P1 not disjoint. That means this is not this is uh, sorry this is not in this set. So we have some intersection, but the C1 up to Cn they are already disjoint. So the intersection must be uh, a point from P with possibly uh, itself or with one of these. So then, uh, so let P be the path whose uh, vertices are like this. U1, U0, U1 up to say Un. Then we can find the smallest J such that We have self intersections here, like this, like uh, uh, u i equals u j for some i uh, less than j, or uh, u j is contained in uh, c l for some n. So if there is an intersection then we must be one of these forms. Either it's a self-intersection point or we have a path and then it intersects with some cycle like this. So we find the smallest integer j, whether such that uh, uh, j is either an intersection between a path and a cycle or self-intersection, but the, the later point of this, like this, okay? Then there are two cases. First, uh, case one, u i equals u j uh, for some zero i. Let's say we have a situation like this. So that means the diagram, uh, it looks like this. So this part is u zero, um, u zero here. And oh, sorry. here is like u i, and it is also u j. 
u0, u1, u2, dot, 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 ui, and then ui plus 1, dot, 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 and then uj like this, okay? In this case, so you see this is ui plus 1, dot, 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 and this is uj minus 1, and etc. So in this case, we're going to define uh, phi c1 dot 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 ct to be uh, p prime and c0 c1 ct where uh, if this is p here if, if this is p p prime p prime is the thing without uh, the loop so p prime is precisely u0 it uses it goes up to a ui but then we're gonna remove all of this so it uh, continues with u j plus one j plus one is somewhere here right so um, j plus one and then up to the last point like this. and c0 is the cycle that we removed so like this so u0 so ui ui plus 1 and up to uj and notice that this is a cycle because these two the ending points are equal and you see uh, the whole edge set uh, doesn't change right because we only moved this these edges to a new cycle so we the total edge set is the same so the weight is preserved but the weight the sign is reversed because uh, we created a new cycle and then each cycle contributes minus one, so it changes the sign. So this is good. And second, so I suppose that U J is contained in uh, C L, some for some L. But in this case, actually, we may assume that L equals one because the order doesn't matter. We can just move the C L here to the front then we can relabel the cycles so that we may assume that l equals one okay so that means as a diagram we have a path here and a cycle say uh, like this we, there may be more more than one intersection point between this cycle and this this is the first point in this path so this is uj and this is u0 and then this is u and say that this is c c l or c1 l equals one so in this case uh let's say c c1 equals v0 v1 up to v q then we're gonna define um phi p comma dot 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 oh, sorry C1, CT to be uh, P prime, and we just remove C1, so it goes from C2 up to CT. So we have to define uh, P prime, but as you can imagine, P prime is going to be um, the loop included, like that. So we include the cycle inside this path, so it go things like that. So in other words, u0 we go up to uj and then um, by the way this is U, uj this is uj because uh, yeah this is a cycle so we can make that this starts from uh, uj because we can always cyclically shift a cycle so this is v v0 is uj and then so the v1 and vq which is also vj now and then sorry uj and uj plus one un like that so we just included this cycle inside this path like this and again uh, we lose we lost one cycle so the sign is reversed and then the edge set is still the same then weight preserving and this is by definition clearly um, involution so for instance if you have this then you remove this cycle and then now you have this situation 
with a different cycle. So we have exactly a situation like this. So if you apply the uh, map again, then you will. Uh, uh, so here we deleted this cycle, but if you do it, do it again, it will be included again. So it will we will get back to where we started. So this is a sign reversing evolution, and it preserves the weight. So that's basically the proof. So that proves this um, theorem or proposition. We found a sign reversing evolution whose fixed point is exactly the set that we wanted. All right, so that's the proof. And let me tell you a little bit more about this proposition. In the next section. So it's a determinant and uh, disjoint cycles. Okay, um, so remember, uh, let's go back to the theorem that we proved here. So we gave two proofs of this. One proof, let's see, let's review. One proof using uh, this or um, we, we we wrote this as a ratio of these two determinants. So the determinant and the its minor. So this was the crucial step in the first proof. And in the second proof, we use the fact that mu, the generating function for this mu is the ratio of these two gammas. So let me uh, summarize that. So we, we proved the formula for this generating function mu n r s x to the n uh, using in two different ways two ways and then uh, important key steps key uh, tools being the following two so we use the in the first proof, we use this fact. The generating function for all paths from R to S is equal to uh, minus 1 to R plus S I minus A, this minor S complement R complement. So it's in, like an inverse minor theorem, determinant of I minus A. So A, A is the adjacency matrix of our graph G. This was a key tool in the first proof and then the key tool of the first uh, second proof was that this generating function is equal to uh, gamma r comma s over gamma. All right. So, uh, but if you look at them, they are both ratios of something. So you may wonder whether there is a connection between these and in fact, they are, they are really the same. They coincide at numerator and de denominator. So numerators are the same, denominators are the same. So we will prove that uh, in this section. So just to uh, recall you, uh, I'm going to give you the set setting. This, this is a directed graph. where V is the set of, uh, the vertex set is the set of integers one up to N and we have our edge weight and adjacency matrix A. This is our setting. And we need to look at determinants. So let's see what the determinant really is. So the determinant of A is the we sum over all permutations of M say and we multiply the sign and we uh, multiply all the possible ways to select uh, the entries so that uh, we select one entry from one one row and one column. So if we have a permutation, we can write this as a product of cycles. 
this joint cycles if this is a, a cycle decomposition then then we know that the sine of pi there are several ways to compute the sign and the one way is the number of even cycles this means the number of even even cycles among these c1 up to cn so even cycle one even cycle contributes minus one to the sign and if odd cycles contributes nothing so uh, that means um, this part sine the sum n we can rewrite uh, this in this way we look at all the uh, we consider all the cycles and then minus one to the number of the card cardinality or the length of the cycle minus one because the length minus one um, so the length means the number of edges in the cycle so if the le length is even we have to have minus one contribution so we said minus one so this means that if this is even it contributes minus one and if this is odd it contributes nothing and we just multiply the product of the cycle at uh, weight of the cycle because this is the you know basically uh, you follow all the cycles and then you multiply the edge weights so that but that's exactly the weight of the cycle so we can rewrite the sum n here uh, all right uh, so that that means determinant of a is equal to sum over all collections of cycle let me write this as our set x i from 1 to uh, t minus 1 to uh, c t w c i where uh, x is a set of all collections uh, of cycles this disjoint cycles actually whose union is as a set uh, as a set is the whole set M that means we decompose M integers M into cycles but because uh, decomposition like this is a cycle decomposition of permutation so this is really uh, uh, another way of looking at permutations but the important thing here is that the union is must be m the whole thing all right uh, now uh, we have a proposition mm, let's see proposition determinant of i minus a i is the identity matrix of the correct size is a generating function uh, written by uh, the capital gamma you know this is a generating function for all disjoint cycles but without this condition right and uh, every cycle must contribute minus one sign sign to yeah minus one to the sign all right so proof just imagine this like a, just a, a another matrix then we can apply the same idea here we can just use this then uh, therefore determinant of this is sum over all collections in X and we uh, multiply I from 1 to T minus 1 to uh, C T minus 1 W prime of C I where this is uh, quite uh, similar to this but because we have to change the a the entries of a into the entries of these matrix but this only only contributes to um, the diagonal entries 
and so except the diagonal entries we have like we just multiply minus everywhere but for the diagonal entry we have one that means the diagonal entries can only appear in a cycle of length zero or, or the fixed point so here w prime c the weight of the cycle is 1 minus wc if c uh, has length length equals 1 and w prime of c is just minus wc if um, oh sorry uh, it's not just minus the sorry, minus 1 to the length of the cycle if uh, the c has length greater than one because if you have a cycle originally we have to use the weight from a but this has minus a so we multiply minus for every edge so that's why we have this but for a cycle of length zero this originally has weight a i i but now in this uh in this matrix, the weight must be 1 minus this, but that means we have uh, 1 minus the weight of the cycle with minus. So this is a, this is really a, a simple consequence of this. Okay? But now that means for a cycle of length 0 or length 1, we have two choices. Either we can choose 1 or we can choose this. So if you choose 1, let's just uh, drop it. We can just ignore that and otherwise we have a minus of this that means this part over here is the generating function if you drop all the minuses or oh, sorry all the cycles of length one then we are left with uh, exactly uh, all collections of all possible collections of disjoint cycles not necessarily their union is the whole set because we may drop some uh, fixed point uh, that contributes to a minus over here, right, one over here. And now every cycle, if you choose here, contributes minus one because of uh, this. Here we multiply the length of this, uh, minus one to the length, and then it will cancel with this. And then you see every cycle will contribute minus one. So that means this is exactly uh, the generating function that we uh, we had before but this is the by definition uh, gamma so that proves this identity so we know we now know that this is equal to this so it remains to prove that the numerators are also the same okay so but that is uh, slightly more complicated so we need some more uh, definitions Okay, uh, so to do that, I'm going to introduce some terminologies. For We have a word, W, W1. The word means uh, just a sequence of numbers. Uh, but, word, word, but we will consider the word of distinct integers. They are all distinct, so... So they, if they are all distinct and if they are all integers from 1 to dot 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 n, then this is really a permutation. But we may have some uh, something uh, um, missing like 1, 3, 5, uh, I don't know, 4, uh, 7, something like that. This is not a permutation, but it's a word of distinct integers. But if you only look at their relative orders, we can uh, certainly make a permutation out of it. So that's the that's what I'm going to do. So the in this case the standardization of uh, this word W is uh, I'm gonna denote this by uh, standardization of W. And this is the permutation pi uh, such that. They have the exact same order. This permit two words. I the 
letter in position i and the letter in position j are in this relative order if and only if the permutations the same positions have the same uh, relative position so for example if w is say 4 3 1 7 9 then pi is the smallest integer we replace the smallest integer by 1 and the second smallest integer by 2 etc so 3 4 5 then now we have a permutation but the order relative orders are exactly the same for instance these two this order is preserved the order uh, this preserved etc so in other words we can uh, consider a word as a permutation in this way because we, we want to do this because we, we can talk about the sign of a word um, okay so a lemma simple lemma and let's say pi is a permutation such that pi i equals j so uh, pi i is fixed and let pi prime be the word obtained from pi by deleting uh, i pi i position so i just removed the uh, pi i somewhere here which is j so this is not a permutation but it's a word but we can make it a permutation by uh, standardizing it then the sign of the standardization of pi prime is minus 1 to i plus j times sine of pi. They have a simple connection. Their signs are uh, related in this way. Okay, uh, proof. First of all, sign of a standardization. There are several ways to compute the sign, but one way is to use the inversion number of inversions so this is number of inversions of the permutations of this but the inversions means that the relative orders are out of order so we only consider relative orders in when you compute inversions so we can write this as the inversion of pi prime okay where i defined uh, inversion only for permutations but this defined exact same way um all right and the sign of a permutation is minus one to the inversion of pi. So we need to compute, uh, compare the inversions, the minus one to the inversion of pi prime and minus one to the inversion of pi. And to do this, we're gonna in introduce uh, uh, auxiliary permutation. So I'm gonna add um, uh, i here. Oh, sorry, uh, j at the beginning and uh, pi like this. Okay, oh, sorry, pi prime. So, you know, in pi, pi prime, this part j is missing. So, I'm gonna use j so that this is our permutation now. Then, what is then, then what, what is the inversion of uh, sigma and uh, minus one to the number of inversions of sigma is so we have to compute the inversions here and then add the number of inversions coming from j so first of all minus one to the inversion of pi prime and plus but the number of inversions coming from j uh, is j minus 1 because every integer here 1 up to j minus 1 will uh, contribute one inversion to this with this j so j minus 1 like that and what about the inversion of uh, this with okay let's compare this with a pi the inversion of pi so see here pi j is here in the position i but now j is at the beginning here. So if you want to go from pi to uh, sigma, we have to multiply uh, transposition like one at a time and i times, uh, sorry, i minus one times. We can move j one at the big one 
uh, in front of it and then one in front of it etc and then we can move this like n my j i minus one times so this contributes sine uh, minus one to the i minus one so because these two are equal uh, we can uh, write down the final form this is minus one to inversion of pi plus i plus j but this is exactly uh, this is the sign of the permutation pi this is the sign of the uh, standardization so there are differences the factor of minus one to the i plus j so that that's the proof okay mm. now we are ready to prove the final proposition let me start uh, maybe in the next page proposition so minus 1 to r plus s i minus a this is the denominator of uh, one key lemma this is equal to uh, the numerator of the the other key lemma okay proof all right just to make it easy to explain let me use this notation bij equals delta ij um, aij in other words uh, this is the entry ij entry of this matrix then um, i minus a of this minor what is this so we have a matrix i minus a this this means we remove uh, s column s uh, sorry row s and we remove uh, column r and then we consider the remaining part and then we compute the determinant of the uh, remaining matrix right so the matrix obtained by removing uh, s column s uh, sorry, uh, row s column r that means we have to uh, choose one um, element from one column and one uh, one row but that means but we have to remove we, we cannot select anything from this but that means that's equivalent to saying that we choose consider all permutations such that this part uh, this entry is chosen in other words, this is equal to um, oh sorry, uh, it's not this one. Permit sum over all permutations, where pi of s equals r, pi of s equals r, like this, and we consider the sign of. But we have to consider the standardization of pi prime, where pi prime is the thing that we can get by removing uh, the. Um, the entry r from uh, pi where uh, so pi prime is to be precise um, s minus one s plus one so pi s is missing in pi prime so we remove the pi s and and now we have to multiply all the fact the entries so i from one to m but we have to uh, remove i less different from s as a b i pi i like that so this is how we can compute this minor all right okay but now because of this lemma we can now use this lemma uh, this lemma this is equal to uh, sum over all permutations as m uh, pi s equals r we have minus 1 to r plus s and the sign of uh, the, the usual permutation pi and then we have the same uh, product pi I, pi i like that all right so now we're gonna consider uh, two cases case one r equals s and see what happens 
then uh, this part i minus a s or we can i can just use r s equals r in this case that means um, so this disappears so pi in the permutation and pi r equals r the sign of a permutation and then finally uh, i from 1 to m but i is different from r like that all right but this is uh okay i say um remember uh, the proof of this where is this when we prove uh yeah just remember i'm uh, sorry not that one yeah remember this we expressed uh, this as a generating function for all this all collections of disjoint cycles uh, with this but we can apply the same thing here except that uh, we just never use r there all right so that means this is equal to uh, the generating function for all let me use c uh, prime and uh, i from 1 to uh, t some sign for every cycle and like that where c prime is the collection set of collections Collection of disjoint cycles. In G, where such that R is not used because we have to uh, remove this part. This is not counted over here. All right, but this is really uh, but this uh, by definition this can be considered as this because uh, r is never used this is really the set uh, pair we can also really think of this as a pair like this because r is not used we can just create a path uh, r there then because now here we uh, this is a path from r to r which is also a cycle now now we, if you look at this we have a disjoint cycles and path from r to r that means these cycles they must be uh, disjoint and also disjoint from r that means r is never used and the uh, weight of this is one so it doesn't contribute so this is exactly equal to this. So that's that's actually what we want. But this is exactly gamma RR as we want it over here. So this is equal to this. Uh, because R equals S, this you can ignore in that case. But this one is done. Now, uh, let's consider uh, the other case. So suppose Case two, suppose that R is different from S. And in this case, um, B R S equals B R S. This is uh, now zero, so it's minus A R S. All right. So uh, in this case, we're going to consider uh, permutation pi. Let's with this condition pi of s equals r and we have a cycle comp in the cycle decomposition we have uh, so pi looks like this we have a bunch of cycles like this we have a cycle decomposition of a maybe we have some uh, this but we must have an edge from s to r because pi s equals r we have an edge like this 
Okay. So, um, right now, if you look at uh, where it is, uh, this part over here, this part over here, we can rewrite this as follows. Um, okay, I'm gonna move uh, minus one to R plus S. Uh, as inverse R, ah, uh, sorry, uh, complement. This is equal to, I'm gonna just factor one of these. So I'm gonna remove this. Then that means we have to multiply B as, uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, B as comma R, right? So we have to uh, put minus one over here. And then B is minus of A, uh, A. Um, okay, let me just write it down. Uh, this is minus A R S inverse for uh, the factor there that's missing. So C1, CT, C prime, where I from one to T, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, let me uh, move this to the next page because uh, we don't have enough space. Yeah. So this part is, uh, this is X, but uh, there must be one cycle having this edge. Let's say that is a C1 because we don't really have any ordering in the Cs. So this, in this case, minus one to CI minus one, W prime CI, where W prime of C equals one minus W. And this is exactly the same idea that we used before. If C uh, has length one and just minus w if c has length greater than one this is as before so we this part uh is here because because here we in, in this way we consider all of this if this weight is also included so we have to remove this weight over here okay uh, now we use exact same method Mm. So by the same idea, because for a cycle of length one, we have choices, two choices, like uh, cho choosing this or choosing this. So again, choosing this means that we just drop that cycle. So that means uh, this can be uh, rewritten minus uh, okay, uh, right. A R S inverse sum over all uh, C one dot 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 C T in uh, sorry in, let's say C prime permutation. Minus one W C I where this C prime is the collection set of collections set of all collections of these joint cycles. Not necessarily uh, their union is the whole set. such that C1, uh, S, this edge is contained in C1, the first cycle. Okay, now we are almost done. But, you know, this edge, this edge doesn't uh, contribute any weight because of this. So now let's just remove this. Let's just uh, delete this. So if we delete the edge, uh, 
then we get a configuration like this uh, like uh, p comma c2 so i i just change it c1 into uh, p and now we have remaining thing this is exactly a uh, c of rs because you see uh, this is C1 first. This is C1 and C2 dot dot dot. C1 now became what? So Because I removed this uh, Maybe I can just use this diagram again Because we removed this we have a path from uh, R to S. This is P, our new path P. And this path and all the cycles are disjoint. So that means we have a pair P and the remaining cycles in this set. Then that is exactly, um, so this part that means this part is equal to, uh, and then now we can forget about this because the cycle here became a path. So we don't need that minus sign and because we have this minus we can get rid of one of these minus coming from c1 then that's exactly uh what we wanted um let me write it correctly crs we have p has just weight without any sign and uh, product or uh yeah I from one to t. Uh, let me just re re rename that so that it start the, it starts from one minus one and w c i. But this is exactly uh, c uh, gamma r comma s. So that's the proof. So this proof shows that even though we use the uh, two different looking uh, techniques to prove this formula for this, they are indeed uh, equivalent in the sense that they're really the same. This is equal to this, this is equal to this, and then we can also prove this using the properties of determinants and some combinatorial arguments. Okay, so yeah, that's the end of this lecture. Thank you.